Right, here we are in DaVinci Resolve 15. I'm not using 16 yet because it's still in beta and uh, I actually need things to be reliable to do work. Uh, so until a few weeks ago, I edited all my videos in Premiere Pro. And the reason I did that really is just because I'm used to it. I've never had any reason to change. But I do my grading in DaVinci Resolve. I just don't find the tools in Premiere anywhere near as intuitive to use. Uh, in short, I get better results color grading in DaVinci. So I figured I would try to embrace DaVinci Resolve as a complete solution and see how I went. Now, as far as editing goes, I'm not really doing anything particularly complicated, but this change still meant that I had to edit, grade, and deliver all in Resolve. And this is quite different than just grading and exporting a bunch of clips in like something like DNxHR or ProRes for later use. So this video looks at a few tips that I've found handy over the last few weeks. It's aimed at beginners. Uh, if you're just starting out with DaVinci and you're editing in DaVinci, or you've, you've made the move from from Premiere to DaVinci, then this might be useful for you. Bear in mind that I'm using DaVinci on Windows 10. Keystrokes will no doubt be different for Mac users out there. And of course, you can change various keystrokes in the options as well. So firstly, remember that DaVinci uses backspace and not delete for most of its stuff. It's something that you've just got to get used to. Retrain that memory muscle or whatever. Take a couple of weeks, not a couple of weeks, no. It only takes a couple of hours actually of, of using it to just retrain your, yourself after using the delete button for so long to use backspace instead. So if I have a key, uh, sorry, if I have a clip like this and I use delete as I would in Premiere, it does a ripple delete and pulls everything along. You can't change that, unfortunately. So you're just gonna have to get used to it. Importing still images does some funky stuff. It does some weird stuff in um, in DaVinci as well. So I've created a bin here called uh, images and I'm just going to show you kind of what I mean. So if I do an import, which I can do by right clicking or just doing control I. Now you're, what you'll see here is I've got some images. I've ne renamed two of them. One of them is called Top Shot, one's called Close Up, but the rest are just straight out of the camera. They're just sequences. So they're they're, they've got numbers that are right next to each other. So 33, 34, 35. That wouldn't be a problem in Premiere. They just import and you can use them as you wish. But if I select all of these and import these into DaVinci, well, what it does is it happily brings in close up and happily brings in top shot, but it sees this as a sequence of images and creates a video from it. That's not what I want at all. The only way that I can really see around this, I thought you could make a change here and do individual frames, but if they're in a complete line, lined up sequence like these are 33 through 39 the only way around this is to do exactly as I've done here and rename them uh, so make them not sequenced in their naming convention and then you can bring them in and use them in the way that you would usually just import an image into your timeline it's really silly but just watch out for that one the other next tip I would say is probably show audio waveforms. So sometimes people get come a bit unstuck because they can't see their audio waveforms here. So you just go to this little one here and click there and then do audio waveform. So enable that because it could be disabled by default. Make sure you've got that enabled and then you will be able to see those waveforms. Right. This one, I'm not going to go into too much detail on this, but I would certainly recommend using keyframes in the timeline. I've always been a big fan of that, and I've done various other videos on this in Premiere, but you can do the same kind of things in DaVinci as well. So firstly, on the audio side, well, you've always got these little handles either side of the clips. If I just zoom in on these, this, this, uh, this clip here, in fact, uh, no, I'll leave it like that for now. Uh, and you can see that you've always got these handles and these are really handy just to do a quick fade on one side quick fade on the other side really nice and handy to do that and you can do the same with audio so you can drag that there and with the audio not only do you get this fade here you also get an option of whether to make it kind of more logarithmic or linear so you get an extra kind of handle here an extra keyframe here which you can make you can drag there to make it a different kind of curve and that's nice, really, really simple. It can, you know, means you can work quickly, but you can also use the Alt key. So hold down the Alt key, and when you're hovering over this little line here that you've got, hold down the Alt key, click, and then you can just insert your own. So I've just inserted two kind of keyframes there, and I can drop the audio down like that. And that's pretty nice, you know, you can do that very, very simply, but you can also do that in the with the video as well. So if I if I'm clicked on the video and I press Shift C, 
then it opens up my keyframing options here. And from here, I can select various things that I can keyframe. Now, not everything can be keyframed in this way in DaVinci. Some OpenFX stuff, for example, just doesn't work. You can keyframe it, but it's weird. You can then never change the keyframe. So you've got to kind of get them right from the start. And I'll do a video on that where I go into a bit more detail. But let's just do a simple opacity drop. So let's just say I'm going to select opacity. That's the thing I want to change. And uh, I can close out of there. And now I can just add... So if I'm going, going into here and I want to drop the opacity, I can add a keyframe by holding down the Alt, drop that down like that, and then as you'll see, if I scrub, scrub through there, that drops the opacity down. I might want to go a little bit further than that to make it more obvious. Add another keyframe there, add another keyframe there, bring it back, back up again, and you can then just sort of move that one up and down like that. So standard keyframing. Uh, you can change your curves as well. So if I've got this keyframe selected, I can then you have my, you know, control my little Bezier curves there. And uh, same on this one, you know, make that one a uh, different type of curve so I can make it more kind of uh, uh, slow to start and then sort of very fast to finish or whatever. But you can do all that sort of stuff in the actual timeline itself, which saves kind of jumping up to here and having to play around here and then moving back down. So you can do it all within your clip. And it's I just find that a really nice and easy way to work. So if you press Shift C again, it closes that down. And if you then press Control Shift C, you can now have just the keyframes. So if you just want to kind of shift where those keyframes start and finish, you don't need to open up the whole thing and start messing around with the values of those keyframes. You can just adjust their position. So that's with Control Shift and see that just opens and closes that on the timeline really nice really simple to do and really powerful because you can just get stuff done quickly which is so important when you're doing this kind of editing stuff the next one is just being aware that these positions if you're adjusting these positions using these arrows here for me at least they just go crazy if i just let's say i'm going to generate a solid i'm going to generate a solid color here and i'm going to drop it on top but I don't want it to fill the whole screen because I want to put a title on top of it so I'm going to just adjust the position um, down oh what's going on there why is that not why is that oh I'm not, I haven't got it selected that would be better wouldn't it if I actually selected it so I'm going to change the Y position and bring that solid down so if I carry on going now it's that's working okay at the moment actually why is that <laughs> why is that working okay uh, oh there we go there we go so did you see that it just absolutely suddenly jumped up so oh and again there we go it's just suddenly jumped it, it, it does this thing where as it scrolls off the screen what you have to do is you kind of have to do it a little bit at a time of course you can enter just normal values in here and it's fine you know if you, as long as you know roughly what the value is but what i like to do is just be able to just kind of scroll left and i'm continuing to move my mouse left here and then all of a sudden it just goes boom and jumps off the screen and you see this values drop down to kind of minus three thousand or something it's really irritating, but let's, yeah, so you might want to just reduce the opacity of that and then put a title on there or something. So watch out for that because they, you know, they're just a bit messy to work with. And finally, just a quick note on shortcuts. Which shortcuts are going to be useful for you depends on what you do the most in, in, in your editor, in your NLE. But for me, I think using uh, knowing the shortcut for A, which is this select tool here, knowing the shortcut for T, which is this trim edit mode, and knowing the shortcut for B, which is blade mode, and also control B, which means you can just do a slice through wherever your timeline is. So if I'm here and I just move to here, if I do control B, it just does a slice straight through without actually changing to the tool. They are the main shortcuts that I think are really useful to know. So if I want to do a, I've sliced through that now and I'm saying, right, I want to trim to there. So now I'm going to change to the T. I'm going to trim to trim edit mode and I'm going to pull this in like that to there. Uh, that's really useful. And then I can just go back to standard select mode with A. So A, T and B. And Control B to me are the most useful shortcuts on the keyboard uh, for doing sort of simple stuff and editing a basic sort of composition like I've got here. So there we go, just a couple of tips on editing. I mean, they're very sort of specific and they're just based around sort of the things I need to do. But hopefully, if you are new, to DaVinci, as I said, or you have moved from Premiere to DaVinci, you might find some of these useful. Thanks very much for watching, and please let me know in the comments if you did find it useful, or subscribe, all that sort of stuff. Thanks, and I will speak to you soon.